All right, so today we're taking a look at this Walters mainline 72 foot HO scale center beam flat car for CSX. So on the ends, we got some labels as caution, no walking surface on top, CSX, a bunch of other things, along with the brake wheel and a ladder. One is taller than the other. And the coupler box does move from side to side. On the side wall here, we got some warning labels. It says car may fall over if your weight is unequal distributed and also to use cable ties because actually for these cars, you need ties if these are empty. And there's the same warning sign if you look around the corner. In the corner, we've got a stirrup step along with some information. And the side of this car just lined up with a bunch of notches, which are for the wires. Now, as we make our way down the car, we got some nice diagonal beams. They're actually supporting the vertical beam, so that's pretty cool. The CSX road number down below, and CSX center beam flat cars, they just come in black. Now, if you take a look on the other end, it is pretty identical to the other side. Now, one thing I didn't realize that would be on this car, there's actually these bumps on the ends. There are actually like three of them in each corner, and I don't know if that exists in real life, but that's a cool detail if it is. So if you take a look on this end, it is pretty much exactly the same as the other side. It's just missing a brake wheel. Now I flipped it around just so you guys see the other side. It is pretty much exactly the same. It's just rotated the other way around. You can see on the roof, we got a nice waffle texture. You're not really supposed to walk on there. And here's what the bottom looks like. You can see there's a nice spine there, but it is uh, pretty bare bones. You can see some air brake detail, but no piping or anything. And for the loops, there are no holes. So it's kind of just for show. Now here is the Union Pacific Opera Window center beam flat car. So this is the same length. It's a different design though. And it does say cushion load. Anyways, here on the side, we got this ladder here and just one long, one short, along with the Union Pacific road number right there. And here's what it looks like on the side. We got the same wall design here and it says, do not move the car unless the tie downs are secure in the case lot. The opera window designs now, this is what makes it different from the other standard center beam flat car. So there are a bunch of these oval windows here on the wall. And it says cushion load, E and Pacific in big letters. And if you look on the other end, here's what that looks like. And here's a close-up shot of the warning label instructions, basically to tie down the car and to load it equally. And on the wall, we got some more warning labels. And on this end, there's actually this 71 fit between bulkheads. If you look on the other end, that's actually missing from the top. Now on the other end, it's pretty much identical to the other side, just does not have a brake wheel. Here's what the other side looks like. Again, this is also identical to the other end. It's just rotated the other way around. Now here's what it looks like on top, pretty much the same as the CSX and the bottom is just uh, painted yellow. Now here is the CSX car with the Union Pacific center beam flat car. And you can see the way they write the lettering is actually different. They have a different style, which actually surprised me because I thought they would just be the same as just a reskin model. But I guess there is a difference between them besides the upper windows and the standard. So center beam flat cars, they often transport lumber loads. So I got this Walters Apollo lumber load and it's basically this uh, plastic shell. It's actually comprised of two parts, which you can split apart so you guys can put this on the rail car itself and the inside of this is what it looks like. It's pretty hollow. And one thing that interests me was that there's actually this texture engraved into the side. I thought it would just be flat, but it turns out there are some notches in it. And here's what it looks like on the end. Now here's the other lumber load that I got. It's actually a dump tar. And I never heard of this company, but I think it's cool. You can see the notches clearer on this one. Now these things are pretty sealed quite tightly together. So you have to pry it quite hard. And that's when I noticed the inside, there's actually these little dots and speck residue inside. After applying some more force, I finally got them apart. And here's what the Apollo lumber load looks like inside the opera car. So it is pretty tight in there. It's not really going anywhere. It's just going up and down. It's not going to really fall out or anything. So 
So here's what the standard center beam flat car looks like with the dumped R load and it looks uh, pretty nice. Between each car it kind of hides what car it is unless you see from the very top there's just that little gap to tell between the opera and the standard.
All right, so for my final thoughts, I think the Walter's center beam flat car are a pretty good addition. If you're making a modern day freight train, these are pretty common to see. And they do have a fair amount of detail for Walter's main line. Of course, they're not like super hyper realistic, but they have a lot of warning labels spread around the car. And it gives a nice general appearance of the center beam flat car, what goes into it. And there are some differences between each car. I thought they would honestly be like copy and paste, but they are differences. Now for the lumber loads, those are also made by Walters and they are pretty decent. I was actually surprised that it wasn't just like a giant flat piece, that there was actually these little trenches inside. That was pretty cool. The one issue that I ran into, which I wish I knew before, was how tight these were going to be. When I was originally trying to get these off the car, they would be really, really hard to get off without breaking it. The way I learned a bit before you guys sort of like break these in kind of like sneakers because they will be pretty stiff pull it from the middle rather from the edges and after a couple of times just taking it apart and putting it back together it gets easier and easier to do but i do wish they weren't as stiff like that from the factory because it does take a lot of force to actually pry them apart if you're wondering where i got these from the center beam flat cars came from lombard hobbies while the lumber loads came from white rose hobbies and i guess they're both called hobbies i know there's a lot of people who are requesting me to get a center beam flat car since that's just one of the most essential types of freight rail cars in America. And I do regret not showing the opera car center beam flat car without its load because while I was filming it, I couldn't figure out how to take it apart without breaking it. But hopefully I will show that in a future video. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, remember to hit that like button down below. If you have any comments or stories about this center beam flat car, let me know in the comments section down below. I do enjoy reading all your comments. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.